Good day everyone, so this is the output number 2 of the problem number 16 wherein we will use recursion in making the code to solve the problem. So we have here our code. First we have our purposes or directives, hashtag include spdio.h. Next is, we have our function prototype or the function declaration in product of sequence or function name and inside the parentheses is our formal parameters which has the um, data type integer and variable num. Next is we have our main function, open curly brace. Then we declared variables which are the n and result which both have data type integer. And now since this um, code will take input from the user, we use the scan a function. Then we have here encountered a function call. We're in our main function calls the product of sequence and and with the um, value inputted by the user or the value of n as the parameters being passed. So now since our program encounters a function call, the control of the program will now follow the function being called which is the product of the sequence. Now here, inside of our function product of a sequence, we have our conditional statements if, else, statement. So, our if statement is if num is equal to 0, return num, which is 0. Else, if num is equal to 1, return num, which is 1. And if both of these statements are false, then this else statement will be secured, which is the return num times num times the product of a sequence num minus 1. So, this here, this is our recursion wherein the function calls itself. So to further elaborate the concept of recursion, we have here an example. So for example, our function in, um, inputted number, which is number 3. So 3 will be the current number of our variable num. So let's check in this part if 3 is true. So let's check if number, which is 3, equal to 0. So since 3 is not equal to 0, this part will not be executed. Else if num, which is 3, equals to 1. So since 3 is not equal to 1, this part will again not be executed. So therefore, this else part here will be the one evaluated by the compiler. The, the statement inside this else statement now is the return num times num times the product of sequence and minus 1. So in which I put in this box up here. So we just plug in the number num times num which is 3 times 3 times product of sequence 2 because 3 minus 1 down here 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So before we can before we can um, evaluate this statement inside the box we must know first what is the value of the product of sequence 2. So, since our program encounters a function call, the control will fall from product of sequence 3 to the product of sequence 2. So, let's find out what is the value of the product of sequence 2. So, our num here is 2. So, let's check if, if 2 equal to 0. So, since 2 is not equal to 0, this part here will not be executed. And next is 2 equals to 1. So since 2 is not equal to 1, again this part will not be executed. And therefore this else statement will be executed. So the statement is return num times num times the product of sequence. So we have here num times num which is 2, 2 times 2 times the product of sequence 1 because 2, we have here 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1. So again before we can execute this statement, Right here, we have to find out first what is the value of the product of sequence 1. So, um, so since our program again encounters call, the control will now fall to the product of sequence 1. And then let's find out what is the value of the product of sequence 1. So, 1, let's check on this part. Is 1 equal to 0? So since 1 is not equal to 0, this part again will not be executed. But in this part, we will check if this part is true, so num, which is 1, is 1 equal to 1. So since 1 is equal to 1, this part here is true, and 
Therefore, the product of sequence 1 will evaluate this return statement right here, which I put in this box up here. So return 1 means that, um, return 1 means that the value 1 will be returned back to the caller, which is the product of sequence 1. So we have it here done here. So return 1 will be returned to the caller. So since we now have the, the value of a product sequence 1, we can now evaluate the statement, which is the return 2 times 2 times product of sequence 1. So let's just plug in the number. So 2 times 2 times the product of sequence 1, which is 1, is equal to 4. And now, since we have the um, product of sequence 2, we can now evaluate or execute this return statement up here. So, let's just plug in the number. So, return 3 times 3 times product of sequence 2, which is 4, is equal to 36. And now, 36 will be returned to the main function who calls the products of sequence. So, 36 will be assigned to the um, 36 will be to the sign to the result variable up here. So, this result variable will now have the value of 36 and now print the product of sequence is 36. So now let's just, um, let's just check if this code is free from any errors in our compiler. So we have here our code which we just copy pasted in our compiler to um, to check if there are any errors in our code. So here we have no error. No. Nope. Now let's just save, compile, and run. So let's check if the code is correct. 3, let's plug in 3 and the result is 36. Another. We will now plug in number um, 4. So, result is 576. True. Lastly, we will put 0. Let's check if the code will um, display 0. So, 